Some of the houses that I called yesterday were like luxury homes, um, like 1.5 million, 2.8 million. Do you think that I should have like a price limit? I personally don't like to go for the high end stuff because the yeah. high end stuff is the first stuff that tanks when the economy goes south. Right. Um, now, Blair will tell you the opposite. Blair will say, you know, the bigger they are, the bigger your paycheck is. And that's absolutely correct. Um, until the day that the economy switches on you and there's no buyers out there and then you're stuck with making a big $6,000 a month payment or something. Um, and so I think it's, uh, I'm a big believer in aim small, miss small and go for something a little bit smaller, more reasonable. It's tough down in your neck of the woods because everything is a million plus, right? San yeah, Diego, pretty know, much. Well, I mean, there's some a starter there's home now in San Diego. So, you know, yeah, there's, there's a lot of houses in, um, South San Diego that are like half a million that are, a yeah. lot small. I mean, they're like they need a lot of work though. So. Are you, are you working in San Diego proper or are you going out, you know, to Lemon Grove and Santee and south to Ote Mesa yeah, I, and I, Chula I, and stuff like that? Yeah, initially I have every single zip code checked because I just didn't know how I should narrow it down. But I don't really think I want to drive like all the way out to those really far places. Well, the reason I would look at maybe driving to those, because, you know, some of that stuff is Lemon Grove, Santa, some of that stuff's not very far. Um, and you're going to get more of a starter house, a what we call a you know mid-market house, a B or C neighborhood, which is probably where you want to be in those areas. I mean, okay. even North, North County is so, uh, you know, it's so flamed up. I mean, you can't get something that's a starter home in Oceanside anymore, for example. Yeah. Real tough. Um, but I think South and East would be good for you. Okay. So so I shouldn't really bother calling on like the multi-million dollar homes, you would say? You know, if you Maybe think you've got a good right exit now. strategy for it, I would, you know, you can continue to do it. Well, um, you know, but my personal preference is to get more of the B and C neighborhood homes um and the you know what we call the blue collar uh lower end white collar type homes b and c neighborhoods probably yeah. down in your neck of the woods six seven hundred thousand dollar price range okay yeah because like dealing with the two million dollar home as a beginner like the, i haven't even done one deal yet so that was, it's kind of giving me anxiety <laughs> yeah no stick with the smaller smaller priced homes um you know we six and and we I think we've heard this before. You've been on enough calls now, Brandon. You know that we don't do anything in our and I don't do anything in my local markets. I don't do anything in California. Anymore. Very very little commercial type things. Um, just because you know there's not enough what we'd call of this type of market, the B and C market left. It's just too hard to find. And so you know I do everything out of state, um, and you can do the same thing from sitting at a desk in San Diego. You can do stuff in Omaha. You don't need to go to do it. You can find somebody to go do that stuff. But everything, in fact, Ashley's on the call here right now, and she'll tell you we don't do anything here, and we don't do anything where she lives up in Oregon. Um, you know, they're just the, the markets are a little bit higher priced, and we'd rather do a more of a volume business. And so, you know, we get calls on a daily basis. In fact, I was just looking at. Um, I'll just so just so for everybody's edification, I'll tell you where we're getting most of our calls now from people, and we're doing it all over the country. But uh, let's see here. As of, this is as of yesterday, this was sent to us by our VA. We're getting the most calls right now from Texas, um, and then Georgia, Alabama, and Missouri right behind that. Um, then Tennessee, Kansas, Arkansas. Oklahoma and Wisconsin. So that's where, you know, we're doing business. Um, of course, in the Carolinas and, you know, we, we try and do more in, in Florida if we can, but uh, you are in one of those markets, it's going to be higher priced. So you have to find the lower priced stuff in the higher priced market, or you have to get comfortable doing the higher priced stuff. 
And it's, I would not start off my, my honest opinion, Brandon, is I would not start off with a $2 million house as your first. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. I'd stay away from that. (laughs) Um, So if you were in all of those States, do you have to have like employees in each state or? No, we wait and get a house and then we'll scramble to find somebody to go look at it. Uh, take video of it. And that, those are folks are easy to find. Um, you know, the minute we get something on a contract, then we'll immediately reach out to people like um, home inspectors, uh, handymen, contractors, real estate agents, other investors in the area, a kid with a camera from a college. Uh, you can find anybody. You can put a Craigslist gigs ad and get somebody to go out and look and photograph your house for 50 bucks or less. Uh, in any area. So you don't need to go there and talk to the seller or do any of that kind of stuff yourself. Now, I know we teach that in the system. um, And I'll go through this, what I actually just said here in a second, but you, you know, the system we teach about setting up the the closing call in person, uh, which is probably ultimately the best way to do it, but you can get a bunch of houses by doing it virtually too. And this is set up, to be a virtual business. So I might, if I was you, I would look to the lower priced areas in your neck of the woods. And then I would look into other areas around the country that may be of interest to you, pick a market or two and then dig in. Okay. Um, How do you pick a market? You know, I would Google the best markets for real estate investors and you'll get, you'll get, you know, on five different screens, you'll get five different opinions. Um, But what you're looking for is and you just have to do the research there's not like a chart you can go to you're looking for an area that has a a moderate priced mid-range home a b to c range home you're looking for an area where the employment levels are going up increasing you get more and more employment Um, you're getting for you're looking for an area probably away from the water uh, you, if you're on the water in California or the East Coast or, or that type of thing, it's going to be a little bit higher priced. Um, you're, you're looking for something where the, uh, the commercial um, things are increasing. Like, for example, <clears throat> typically you'd never look at Cleveland as a market that you'd want to flip this in. Cleveland's a great market to buy a rental in. It's a horrible market uh, to flip a property in. However, Amazon is building a giant uh, center in Parma, Ohio, which is right outside of Cleveland. And they're going to hire, I don't know what the number is, 18, 19,000 people. Um, And so that is, and you know, a a certain percentage of those folks are not just the, the, the workers in the factory, in the plant, in the, in the fulfillment center, they are middle management, upper management type thing. Something like a thousand people are going to be in that middle upper management. That's a thousand people they're going to be moving from other parts of the country uh, to live there. They're going to need a home quickly. And so, um, and that's going to change the dynamics for sure of Parma and probably for the outskirts of Cleveland near Parma. And we're seeing that all over the country. So look for good economic news. You look for employers who are increasing, not decreasing. Um, And those would probably be your best markets. Okay. Well, for my first deal while I'm starting out, do you think it's still a good idea to stick where I am? I would. I would stick there, but go into those areas, like I said, east and south, uh, maybe northeast, maybe even go up, you know, towards Riverside County, uh, you know, Temecula up in there. Uh, Okay. So it doesn't matter if it's like in the middle of nowhere? Yeah. I mean, if you can drive it, well, you don't want a house out in the middle of the desert. You know, you don't want to go out to El Centro. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I've like been that. getting a lot of that. Yeah, you, you know, El Centro doesn't have a good economic base anymore. Uh, it did. And farming was farming's been great, but everybody's jacking with their water supply, and that's going to kill farming, which is going to kill the town. So okay. Imperial's gone. El Centro's next. That type of thing. That's the kind of stuff you want to look for when you look at an economic condition of an area. Uh, the rest of the area is, you know, still pretty good. Um, you know, I, I would look at some of the more moderate price stuff, east, uh, south, um, northeast is where I would go. Okay. And potentially, uh, 
you know, north and, you know, into North County, if there's some, you know, areas up there that might make sense. Thank <laughs> you.